first met Malcolm in a nightclub in Falkirk when he, well, I'd met this girl and, you know, I was young, we were having a bit of a snog on the couch and um, I went to buy her a drink and when I went to take her a drink back, she was leaving with Malcolm. Still I go around the old places from my past Watching from the outside and the hope they'll take me back It's not my youth I'm after, it's not protection I just can't seem to get on with the man that I've become he does clam up in interviews, I imagine. He, he's not a particularly helpful interviewee, I don't think. I mean, he may have changed now, but I can't imagine so. I actually got asked recently if I'm a really, if I'm a terribly lonely person. And I'm not, I'm kind of, it's only when I, I write about that kind of thing that I'm thinking about it. I'm not like sitting with my glass of red wine, my blackberry and my notepad, looking at the ceiling every night, kind of, into the abyss. But um, just when I do write songs, it tends to be when I'm in a certain mood. Someone once said to me that um, people who write sad music is a bit like the opposite of a clown being sad. I think if you write sad songs, you tend to be quite a happy person generally. It's quite healthy to do so. It's like a, it's a very therapeutic, cathartic sort of thing to, to write. I've got a box, I've got a knife, Got a door that leads out of life Absent lover, broken friends Getting six, seven, eight, nine, ten It's coming around again Taking my turn on the turning wheel I'm coming around again He's more depressing in real life than he is in these lyrics I've seen him at an all-time low, you know and it's been a great party that we all went to one night and they just they completely ruined it with his crap sense of humour and he put on one of his own records as well. The persona that people have him isn't really the, the, the man that you'll know, but it might take you a while to come into his sense of humour. He's a dark bastard, like. We did used to call him the Ginger Winger. But he's an absolute teddy bear once you know him, yes. Panda! <whistles> Oi! I play guitar and violin and sometimes piano and sing for Malcolm Midland. I think he's um, fairly self critical and he's, um, you know, Malcolm's very self contained, so, you know, you can't really fling your arms around him and go, oh, good job. <laughs> This is some work I like, but I, that was kind of about it. Thanks. <laughs> bass guitar along with Faith No More when I was 16 or something. So it came back a bit too easily. You, you mentioned about the 80s, you do use an 80s aesthetic every now and again. I never can pick out the sort of thing, but there is sort of Cassio tones and things like that. Mm. Is that something, are you a bit of a nerd when it comes to that? Something? No. Strong guitars accompany Malcolm's very into noise. I think people would be surprised to see Malcolm's record collection. Big Napalm Death fan. Okay. Aiden's better off without Malcolm. Aiden's got a much better solo career and Malcolm's just nose diving, so if you check out his albums and the sort of credit bits, play most of the instruments, Malcolm just sort of plays chords and kids on it can finger ping. My first album came out in 2002. That was 514 Fluoxetine, Seagull, Alcohol, John Nicotine, which was followed up two years later by Into the Woods. 
After that, it was a brighter beat in 2007. Have you made up your mind? Or do you need a little more time? Wax and give us the new record. I think I was trying to make a return to some of the Into the Woods style where I recorded stupid melodies at home and stuff and it's a bit lighter. And me and my stuff when it's good when it's not I've not given you all that I've got Here's the secret I've got more I've been saving for in case you have doubts or I fall from my place I'm not sure if it will um, set the record shops on fire I'm going to try to sell the record, am I? <laughs> and I uh, I think it will set the record shops on fire and I think everyone needs to hear it, yeah.